So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the live action Monkey D. Luffy. But did the figure turn out better than the anime version of Luffy or worse? Is this figure just as good as the live action Netflix One Piece series? I don't know. Let's find out and get into this review right now. So for the box here, pretty basic, but I do like the design. There's the front with the window, the top, the bottom with the blah, 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 blah stuff. There's the one side, the other side with the going merry, the back with some promo pegs on the barcode, blah, 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 so nobody cares about. Let's take a closer detailed look at this figure now. Alrighty, taking a closer detailed look, and right off the bat, I just want to say the clothing does have some beautiful shading all throughout it, and I love that. Definitely deserves a DD19+. plus. The striat, though, looks pretty good. No shading or anything like that and the smiling type face does look like a Naki Godoy. You also do see Luffy's scar right under his left eye there. The vest is a softer rubbery type plastic but like I said before it does have some nice shading to it and there's also some really good sculpted wrinkles and everything. Shorts also look good with the sculpt detail and the shading so like the way that turned out you see the shading on like the inside of the legs and then at like the bottom and then uh, the shoes also turned out fine. Skin tone also does match throughout this Luffy as well. So the detail on this figure, I feel like is pretty solid and, and definitely one of the better aspects to this Luffy. Moving on to the accessories, we really don't get much with this Luffy and it's not like he was a $35 figure. So I am a bit disappointed with that. We do have two head sculpts and faces along with seven alternate hands, but I feel like this was another missed opportunity opportunity to give him gum gum limbs or at least a goddamn stretchy arm. Like, what is going on? Why aren't we getting these with any Luffy figures as of now? It's it's just annoying. Like, come on, bro. Hopefully, we at least see it with the East Blue anime Luffy. So, we do get two head sculpts and faces. We do have the straw hat head sculpt and the head sculpt without the straw hat. So, you cannot remove his straw hat and also, once again, no straw hat resting on his back accessory, but I don't believe we saw that in the series from what I remember. For the faces, we have the basic stern face and the slight smiling face. The smile face I think looks great, but the stern face just has a dead look to it, and I feel like this was another missed opportunity. I don't know why they didn't give him the wanted poster smiling face or even that nobody messes with my friends angry face. So, once again, a bit let down by that. And last, we have the seven alternate hands. We get a pair of fists, a pair of resting type hands, a pair of open splayed out type hands, and one right karate chippity chaparoo hand. So that is all the accessories included with this live action Luffy. Now for the height for the Anaki Godoy Luffy to the very tippity chaparoo to the top of the straw hat. It looks like he's pretty much six inches tall. And now here he is compared to some other One Piece figures. We don't have any other live action yet. So we do have the SH Figuarts, Zoro, and Luffy. He's pretty much the same height as the anime Luffy. And then we do have the anime heroes Chopper, Brook, and Frankie. But yeah, I, I think his scaling is perfectly fine. And then here he is compared to the Aton Customs, live action Roroni Kenshin. Then we do have the SH Figuarts, Gojo, Bardock, and the legendary Super Saiyan Goku. So there is the height and height comparisons of the Anaki Godoy Luffy. Now let's move on to the articulation. So for the articulation, looks down okay, looks up all right. You do get very nice pivot, and then of course, swivel action. Torso goes forward okay, back all right. You do get very nice pivot at the waist mainly, and then, whoops, looks like his leg fell off. Then it does swivel. Uh, you get a nice circular motion out of the shoulders, goes out a little more than 90, they go up and down, a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows that just go in a little more than 90, then you do get the swivel and hinge on the wrist, and the leg fell out again. God darn it, that's an issue I have. Have. Legs kick forward about 90 degrees, don't really go back much, and cannot van damn it, sadly. You do get the uh, thigh swivel, single jointed knees that bend back a little more than 90. You do get the swivel at the ankle, hinges up really good, down really well, and you get some pretty good ankle 
Pivot, and then of course the Toe Hinge of Roo. Overall, I do like this figure, and it's a pretty good release. Yeah, I'm disappointed that we didn't get a gum gum stretchy limb, like an arm or something, and I'm not too happy with the very limited amount of accessories. The stern face looks a bit odd, and there was just a lot of other facial expressions Anaki Godoy does throughout the series that they definitely could have done. And it's not like this was one of their cheaper $35 figures that comes with the basic accessories. The detail, I think, turned out really nice, and the articulation is also very well done, but the accessories definitely is a bit of a letdown. I do love the shading on the clothing throughout the vest and pants, and it is a really fun figure to pose around. Now, for my rating of the live-action Monkey D. Luffy, I think I'd have to give this one a 7.6 out of 10. But anyway, that is my review of the SH Fig Yards live action Anaki Godoy Monkey D. Luffy. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the figure in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, I will catch you on the next episode of Daredevil 19, and I will also see you guys later. I am the knight. Gonna change the future.